Hey guys, Tomboy601, and today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new American Tier 8 Tech Tree Destroyer, the Allen M. Sumner. We're going to be going over a full review of the ship. That's the commander. That's the modules. That's the consumables. We're going to be talking what this ship excels at and what it's good and all of that, and we'll walk you through uh, and show off a game and talk through all of the stats. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you stay tuned. So first things first, let us dive into the commander of the ship and we are running good old Vincent Mortif. He is my go-to for the American destroyers. Uh, he's essentially a, a Halsey, but he has a, an excellent base trait that boosts his main battery reload, which is super great. Other skills we are running are as followed, observant rage, mortar, perceptive, sheltered arms, and unstoppable. Sheltered arms is so something that is also unique to him. It's gonna reduce the chance of your main battery being uh, main battery and your modules being knocked out. Our two inspirations we are running is Eric Bay and William Sims. And yep, that's that's the commander. Let's go ahead and talk about those mod slots. Uh, tier eights, even though they've gone up a tier, they don't receive an extra mod slot, sadly. So we are stuck with the usual four that you would see on something like a tier seven. Those our selections for this one is going to be Aiming System Mod 1, Steering Gears Mod 2, Concealment Mod, and finally, Main Battery Reload Booster. Uh, I think those are probably going to be your best ones. You could make an argument that you want the extra range, but the shells are just a little too floaty to really justify an extra 5% range on something like that Main Battery uh, mod that boosts the range. You could also go for the engine boost to uh, help accelerate and decelerate, but I still think the being able to turn quicker is going to be what benefits you just a little bit more. Consumable, well, we have the damage control party, party, the bog standard one. You know it, you love it, you've used it since the beginning of this game. Uh, so five second duration, 40 second reload time. Then you're gonna get two charges of smoke. They're gonna uh, deploy for 28 seconds stick around for 124 seconds. It's gonna reload in 240 seconds and you'll get two charges of it. And finally, you have the engine boost. It's gonna boost your overall top speed by 8%. It's gonna last 120 seconds. It's gonna reload in 180 seconds and you're gonna get two charges of it. So those are all of those are all of the details. As far as what is the Allen M Sumner, think of it as the class that preceded the gearing. And uh, well, it plays like the gearing. We'll get into the similarities coming up right here, but uh, guys, it's 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 literally just a gearing, a, a tier lower, and it's it's freaking magical. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive on in to the stats of the ship. Alan M. Sumner hit points twenty one thousand two hundred, just uh, two two thousand under the gearing. Armor thickness between thirteen and twenty millimeters. Let's go ahead and take a look at that armor view. And well, guys, it's a destroyer. It's coated in 19 millimeters, and then the superstructure is 13 millimeters. That's that's really all you need to know as far as the armor thickness goes. Uh, there's no torpedo belt, so there is no torpedo reduction. Main battery, well, you're going to have three two-barreled 127 millimeter guns with a firing range of 10.9 kilometers, which is weirdly more than the gearing. Yeah, it's 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 just a little weird reload time on those 2.3 seconds, giving you a shells per minute of 157. 180 time on those guns, 8.3 seconds with a damage of 2200, giving you 345,400 DPM with a 5% chance to set fire when using HE. AP, on the other hand, 2,530 damage, giving you a DPM of 397,210. Torpedoes, well, these are where it varies because uh, here's a hint. Those main battery stats, nearly identical to the gearing other than the range stat. Like I said, it's it's really, you're going to pick up a hint. You're going to pick up a theme here. It's this ship is just a gearing at a tier lower. Torpedoes, two five-barreled 533 millimeter uh, torpedoes with a reload time of 145 seconds. Damage, 17,900 with a detectability range of 1.4 kilometers. Torp speed is going to be 66 knots with a range of 16 and a half kilometers. That's right. If you're familiar with the gearing, you just heard a bunch of stats that are the exact same. The only difference is, is uh, Sumner has a 10 second longer reload time 
145 seconds compared to 136, so nine seconds, but still. Uh, AA, well, you're going to have a five kilometer range, minimum damage 45, max damage of 136, max speed of the vessel 36 and a half knots with a turning race of 620 meters and a rudder shift time of 2.8 seconds. Finally, the concealment of the vessel detectability by sea, six kilometers, detectability by air, 3.1 kilometers and detectability when firing in smoke, 2.6 and, uh, well, it's stealthier than the gearing by 0.1 kilometers. So really, once again, this feels like it's some sort of misprinted premium or some some weird variant. Anyways, uh, those are all the stats of the vessel. Let's go ahead and dive on in to a match with it. So welcome to Dos Hermanos, AKA Two Brothers. And we're gonna start off swinging by setting out some of those torps. The reason is, well, the Sumner has some very long range torps that have decent speed to them, but especially when you're on a map like Dos I want to say Los Poyos Hermanos. No, like two brothers. Uh, you know that people like to kind of be transitory out there and maybe one out of 10 times you get the enemy destroyer by throwing out some zoning torps like this. So we might as well explore our options and throw them out there. Of course, we are checking the map. We have an evenly spread amount of destroyers. That's something that hasn't really been true as of late because it really does feel like we've been uh, experiencing some some unbalanced destroyer matches but for now we're gonna go ahead take the lead at the front of this island see if we can get any spotting we do see the enemy aircraft coming in uh the the stats of summoners aa not the best but still pretty decent we're gonna go ahead we know we're spotted we don't want to blow our smoke this early uh american smoke it's great for getting into a position but it, it can be absolutely rough if you have to blow it early. Friesland out there, he's experiencing that now. He just blew his cover. We're going to go ahead, engage him, let him hide into his smoke, and then be able to use this time to drop off the radar because, well, he was the only one in range for us. We now also have the, the good old information that there is a Friesland over on our side of the map, and that does mean we have to play this smart because, well, while Alan M. Sumner is a king of tier eight, uh, he is the Sumner... Like I said, it feels like a gearing, and therefore, you, you you know, gearing was already one of the best gunboats at at the legendary tier. Bring it down a notch because you have more range, slightly less hit points, and you know, a, a slightly longer torpedo reload, and it's still doing really fine for itself. It's still gonna be okay when it comes down to these matches. But anyways, Friesland. We still have to be worried about that DPM monster, so we want to play this smart. We don't want to try to push into him right now. He could be having his sonar up. If he has his sonar up, he is going to be able to easily spot us, though we do find ourselves this nice little sheltered location right here. We're going to use the island for cover, not for visual cover, but at least for fire from the for, for cover from the Friesland and the rest of the enemies. We'll keep an eye on the Iowa's turrets. If he decides we're worth uh, countering, then we'll go ahead and hide on behind these islands. Also, now we see that the second of the three enemy destroyers is also on this side with us. So we are going to need to have to play this a little bit more cautious. We're going to stick our nose out around here. Uh, just see what we can see. We can see Friesland's still in his smoke. We're going to try to kind of wombo combo this, if you will. And by that, I mean, we're going to lay that those torps down so that they travel both through the smoke and still at that Iowa because they're just zoning towards, because they're just slow, we're going to assume that maybe they are going to have to, uh, you know, sail through them, try to cause some some random hits. Also, Republic comes out. He's broadside to us. Uh, as, as always, American AP is very strong. We're going to farm some decent damage off the Republic right here. We can also see Friesland is still taking, uh, taking note of us, and we're going to let him kind of fire off, fire off at, at long range. Of course, Destroyer shells, very floaty, so uh, the further range out you are, a little bit safer you end up being. Also, we're just kind of trying to keep him engaged. Maybe one of those torpedoes will end up hitting him. Sadly, <laughs> we just miss him. It was, a, it was a good try, right? That's a good try. But anyways, we're going to go ahead, try to hug uh, back behind this island right here, try to get some cover. Um, of course, enemy dive bomber coming in. Interesting strategy coming in at us at 90 degrees when he's not a, a Russian I, I was very confused and thought he was a Russian ship just because uh, of the way he was coming in. I was like, oh, do I have to turn? No, no, he's just attacking at awkward angles. That's fine. Anyways, 
Friesland pops up here. Uh, our, our carry doing a decent job of keeping him spotted, or at least at, at this point, I think we're the one spotting him. We're going to go ahead and pop our smoke. We know we can gun him down by the time he gets to us if he doesn't have his sonar. Of course, he drops off spot. We'll set a set of torps at a distraction. Friesland still there. Thankfully, our team is spotting him. I think it's our plane who's doing an excellent job. It's it's our carrier because, of course, Friesland, nasty AA, so he is definitely sacrificing some planes in order to make this play. He gets an excellent drop, and, well, we are going to finish off Friesland. We don't need to worry about torpedoes from Friesland because, well, he has none. But we do need to worry about torpedoes from that ship right there, the Black. He ended up burning his radar right there. Didn't get too many hits for the burn, which is okay by us. But we do know we are now sitting in smoke. Of course, we probably have time. It is it is the Black who has monumentally slow torpedoes. In fact, I think that's one of them right there. We're going to have time to get out of this position, sail around. We do have the confidence with, with Sumner to be able to push up, be able to engage the black because once again Sumner pretty much the king of gunboats at this tier uh, we do nearly sail into another torpedo but we cleverly dodge it right there uh but yeah Sumner Sumner I don't know why it's the way it is because it really does feel like a gearing just one tier lower I know I keep saying that but I I can't impress on you enough how much it feels we have a full health black here watch as we just simply demolish this boat. Uh, of course, Black based on the Fletcher, the preceding ship. Of course, he does have some small nerfs to him, but uh, you, you can see what we just did to him there in that short thing. Republic backing up, trying to support his Black. We'll go ahead and get the dodge there and narrowly dodge the Black who shot through that little gap right there. So good on him. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be so lucky on this one. Nope, he's going to take a good chunk from us there. But we want to continue engaging this Republic. Aircraft carrier drops in his torps. We'll we'll sneak around it, and well, that's all we have to worry about there. We're going to go ahead start turning out here, just because we don't know what the status of those black torps are. We know he fired at least one set of them a little bit ago. We don't know where the other ones. We don't want to push in too much on him. Of course, he's going to have the advantage. He's going to have the spotting just because his his planes are sitting over here way more than our planes are sitting over there. Once again, their their guy. Coming in at the 90 degree bombing run, thankfully not the most effective strategy from him because uh, or else we could have been a little bit world of hurt. Thankfully, our uh, radio frequency identifier getting, getting a good fix on the black. Two salvos, oh no, three salvos, and he's gone. We do end up picking up the clear sky metal there. Uh, so gearing, gearing pretty good. Of course, I think we're going up against Akaga right now and well, we, we know the the paper mache status of the Kaga. Um, but anyways, speaking of the Kaga, there he is. We'll go ahead, start engaging the Kaga here. Uh, we're, we're, our team is doing well. So far, it looks like the enemy has begun and is nearly within our base from the other side. Our two battleships have been pushed to the lower right hand, lower left hand corner. So as of now, the plan is try to finish off this Kaga and then swing hard down into the capture point because they are probably going to need our assistance. We are the only destroyer left alive. And when you are the only destroyer left alive, you're one of the most important pieces. Uh, right now, we still do have an aircraft carrier, which does provide spotting. But destroyers are a very important tool and their effectiveness boosts as you survive longer and longer in the round just because there's less and less... Uh, there's, there's more and more opportunity for ships to have gone to different places, and therefore spotting is just more and more important. We let out that set of torps. Kaga looking like he's going to sail straight into them. Uh, we're just trying to take some avoiding action right here on these on these torpedoes. We don't want to give away free HP, or free HP to the enemy. Uh, Kaga has that beautiful flat front section. We're going to try out the AP on it. It works okay, but we'll go ahead and just flip over. 2 HE, try to secure the kill. There we go, 100,000 damage, and now time to burn towards the cap. As far as my thoughts on Sumner, she's a fantastic ship, guys. A absolutely fantastic. If, if you like American gunboats, you are going to like the Sumner. That is, that is just how it is. It is a fantastic vessel, and one that, uh, you know, really just carries the legacy of 
the American destroyers. It's great at being a gunboat. The torpedoes are a utility at this point in these in these boats. Um, I think I've definitely seen some people want to build them as a dis, uh, as a sort of uh, as a sort of torpedo boat, and I've been guilty of building the gearing as a torpedo boat just because, like gearing where it is already, you could in theory, put gleaves on it and the guns are serviceable enough where he, it can still compete with all of the other legendary destroyers. And I think Sumner is still in that way. So you could still build Sumner as if it was a gearing and you, or you could build it kind of like a torp boat. You could, if you want, put gleaves on there, uh, boost those torps. I don't think you're going to be as effective, but you may be able to put more torps down range, which is, you know, always fun when you're in a destroyer. But the guns are where it's at, man. The guns are simply fantastic. Anyways, our team has now uh, very much secured uh, the the enemy ships that we're pushing in. We, we did not really plan on this. And if we're looking back, this is probably where I make a mistake within the game. Just because we can kind of start seeing that Massachusetts is making his way north. And our carrier is also making his way into the enemy capture circle. And that could spell some disaster for our late game. Not that we're in too huge of a risk of really losing this game, given the number of boats we are up. But if I look back, um, I probably at this point should have headed north, tried to cut off the Massachusetts at the top of the path, as opposed to what I'm doing here, which is trying to just catch up to him, um, which, you know, it is what it is. These, these are why we... This is why we analyze gameplay. We look back, we understand our mistakes, and we try to learn from it, right? Anyways, uh, back, to, back to the Sumner. Sumner, yeah, she's just great. She's just great. Um, uh, is she the best destroyer at the tier? Maybe. I mean, we're, we're fresh. We're fresh into it. We don't have a lot of evidence right now as to uh, which ships are the best, but anecdotally... Uh, Yugamo is just more Kagero, which, you know, yes, it's a fun, it's a fun tort boat, but that's all it is. You're, if you get seen, you're dead. And when you're going to be tier eight and you're always, no matter what happens, going to have to play legendary ships when you're in tier eight, right? I mean, maybe there will be a day where you, where you play tier seven ships, but would you rather have Yugamo or Shimkaze? Uh, Shima, all damn day. Uh, which, you know, makes sense. It is the next tier up. Uh, from what I've heard, Delny has been a resounding meh. Um, so there's no reason to really play Delny if you have Cab. Uh, you know, Z, Z46 has been, I've heard mixed things on that. I'm, I'm trying to earn that ship next because I want to take it out. But Sumner, Sumner is just her her tier her legendary tier counterpart like with a 10 second longer reload on the torps 2000 less health a little bit further range a little bit better concealment it it feels like it's just some weird variant of a legendary boat it feels incredibly powerful and it plays incredibly powerful i think also the boat sits just a tad bit lower in the waterline which makes it a harder boat to hit which I am absolutely fine with because it's fun to play. But yeah, we go ahead, pursue this Massachusetts up this path. Probably not the smartest play, but I mean, at this point, uh, as we discussed earlier, we are definitely going to be winning this match. So uh, we just need to engage him right here. And uh, we go ahead, set out our torps just in case we can't finish him. Pop the smoke and well, down he goes. And that finishes us off in the match. One short of a Kraken, if I recall, but with a decent points haul. So, guys, if you liked the video, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.